All right, hello AP Stats Fanatics. Uh, we're going to start to take a look at Chapter 6 on random variables, and specifically 6.1. Uh, we'll cover the first half of this uh, section in this video. Uh, we'll just talk about discrete and continuous random variables, uh, but specifically we'll just be talking about discrete random variables in the first half of this presentation. So some of the things we'll be learning for the entire section on uh, discrete and continuous random variables. Uh, we should be able to compute probabilities using the probability distribution, or in other words, a probability model of a discrete random variable. So we'll have to define what discrete is. Uh, we'll also calculate and interpret the mean, otherwise known as the expected value of a discrete random variable. And also we'll calculate and interpret the standard deviation of a discrete random variable. And that's what we'll finish uh, today. And then we'll pick up the other lesson, uh, the other half of this lesson, and compute probabilities using the probability distribution of certain continuous random variables. And we'll define what continuous means. So, a probability model. We've talked about that in the last chapter. Uh, remember, a probability model has to have a listing of all the events in the sample space with their associated probabilities. So, as it says here, a probability model describes the possible outcomes of a chance process and the likelihood that those outcomes will occur. So, just another way of saying that. So, uh, like, let's, let's take an example here. Let's look at it. Consider tossing a fair coin three times. Uh, the event, X, is the number of heads obtained. Okay. So, we look at that. Uh, you know, we can look at the situation where X is zero. X is the num you know, number of heads obtained. We get zero heads. If we flip a coin uh, three times and get tails, tails, tails. There are three different ways of getting one head. One head. Uh, we could get the head on the first flip and then tails, tails. Or we could get tails, heads, tails. Or tails, tails, heads. There are three total outcomes here uh, that have uh, exactly one head uh, in the flipping the coin three times. In this one here, we've got two heads. We've got two heads uh, amongst the three flips of the coin, and that could happen by going heads, heads, tails. So again, there's two heads out of the three. Heads, tails, heads, or tails, heads, heads. These are all unique outcomes uh, because they, have, they all happen at different uh, times. And then there's only one way to get three heads, and that's just getting heads, heads, heads. So we can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight total unique outcomes uh, to this whole probability model. So we can create a probability model for this. Uh, looking at the different results, these are the different outcomes we could get. We could get zero heads. We could get one head by fl in flipping a coin three times. We could get two or we could get three. And then each of these events has its own unique probability. Uh, to get zero heads, which means to get tails, 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 that happens one out of eight times. This is just one out of the eight different outcomes that we have. We get one head, three out of eight, two heads, three out of eight, and three heads, one out of eight. Uh, so again, what we want to concentrate on too is to be able to look at the outcomes down here, look at the probabilities, and again, all those probabilities should be a number between zero and one, and they uh, should all add up to 1, in which they do. 1 eighth plus 3 eighths is 4 eighths, plus 3 eighths is 7 eighths, plus 1 eighth is 8 eighths, or 1. So this is a legitimate probability model. We can take a little graph and look what that distribution looks like. Uh, and this is just simply a little histogram uh, of our results. Now, a random variable, there's another vocabulary where we're going to look at. A random variable takes numerical values that describe the outcomes of some chance process. The probability distribution of a random variable gives us possible values and their probabilities. Okay, so a random variable is what we talked about here. It's that x. That random variable is x. Uh, it describes the outcomes of some chance process. So we're looking at the number of heads obtained in this process. The probability distribution is what we have right down here. Um, and even to that point, uh, graphing it too would show what that distribution looks like. So we could talk about its uh, about its sh shape, its out, uh, outliers, its center, and its spread. In other words, remember SOCS, S-O-C-S, 
Uh, we could describe that distribution in that manner. So there are two main types of random variables, discrete and continuous. Uh, today we're just going to talk about discrete. Uh, so if we can find a way to list all possible outcomes for a random variable and assign probabilities to each one, we have a discrete random variable. What I like to say is that it is finite. A discrete random variable is finite. You should be able to list all of the outcomes uh, and have an end. It will not go on forever. Uh, so we should be able to list all possible outcomes and then assign each probability to each. So uh, a discrete random variable uh, that we talked about in the previous round is uh, you know, some set of possible values uh, with gaps between. Uh, so the probability distribution of a discrete random variable lists the values, lists the individual values, that's what x sub i means, and their pro individual probabilities, p sub i. So we saw on the previous screen, you saw that we had uh, zero heads, one heads, two heads, and they had a list of its each individual probabilities. You know, so um, that's what we have here is the value uh, of that uh, uh, random variable x and the associated probability. And again, as we talked about it before, the individual probabilities must be between 0 and 1, and they should all add up to 1 to be a legitimate probability distribution. So, uh, you know, that we should always take a look at that uh, to make sure. So, the, uh, uh, one of the main questions we want to look at when we have a probability distribution is to be able to find out, well, what is the mean outcome? or what we like to say is the expected outcome. What would you expect to get? <clears throat> so uh, when analyzing discrete random variables, we follow the same strategy we use when, with quantitative data. So we do, again, we talk about the shape, the center, the spread, and identifying the outliers. And as we talked uh, before, you should remember your SOCs too, your S-O-C-S. So your shape, outliers, center, and spread. So what we'd be looking for is the mean, uh, again, as I said, is an average of those possible outcomes. Uh, and those probabilities are kind of the weights of those outcomes. So uh, what we want to do is to find the mean of uh, a probability distribution of a, discrete random, of, of a discrete random variable is all we have to do is just multiply each possible value. So we take this value right here, whatever that happens to be, and multiply it by its corresponding probability. Do that to the next one, take this uh, value, and multiply it times its probability, etc., etc., and then add them all up. So that's what we kind of talked about here. We got right here, that's the old abbreviation for mean, the population mean. So we're looking at the population mean of our random variable x. We can also refer that as to the as the expected value of x, and that's the big E value stands for there. And really what we're doing is just taking, again, x1 times p1, take a value times its probability, plus a, this value, second value times its probability, plus its third value times its probability, etc., etc. Or in general, we can write as the sum of all of the individual values times their individual probabilities. And I'll show how to do this. We can do this in a calculator as well, too. So, in an example, uh, it says a baby's APGAR score is the sum of the ratings on each of the five scales, which gives a whole number value from 0 to 10. Yeah. So X, a random variable, is going to be an AP, APGAR score of a randomly selected newborn. So here's our distribution here. So we're going to compute the, compute the mean of this. Uh, what we have to do is take 0 times 0 0.001, plus 1 times 0 0.006, plus 2 times 0 0.007, etc., etc., and we would multiply them all out, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and they add them all up, and we get 8.128. I'll demonstrate that in the calculator at the end of this uh, PowerPoint presentation. But before that, too, I want to talk about the standard deviation uh, on our next slide. So we can see that the mean was 8.128 from this table. We can see that just a little bit after 8 is what the average or the mean APGAR score is. Standard deviation. Again, we measured, talked about standard deviation before. Um, and since we use mean as a measure center, we should use standard deviation. 
uh, as a review, if a distribution is skewed, we should use median for the center and IQR for the measure of spread. Uh, so uh, the definition of the variance of random variable is similar to the definition of the variance for a set of quantitative data. So uh, again, variance is just the standard deviation squared. So we're going to get this answer. We're going to have to square root it. So kind of a long formula to actually go ahead and calculate the variance. Uh, again, you take the individual value minus the mean of that uh, squared times the probability, individual probability of that one plus the second value minus its mean squared times its individual probability, etc., 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 and just add them all up. Now to get the standard deviation of that, uh, you'd have to just take the square root of this answer. Now we're never going to do this one by hand. Uh, we will do this one with the calculator. So we just have an appreciation for what's going on here. Okay, so if we look at the, go back to the APGAR scores, again, what you'd have to do is you'd have to, uh, you know, take uh, the individual value minus the mean, which was that 8.128 from before, square it, and then times 0 0.01. Add it to 1 minus that mean that we had earlier of 8.128, square it, times this probability. Okay, so you can see this can be a long and tedious work, especially if you had a lot of values for this, and that's why we're going to end up using the calculator. There's our variance. Square rooting that would give us our standard deviation. Okay. So again, remember standard deviation is uh, roughly the, the average score, uh, uh, how the difference, that it differs from the mean. So each of these APGAR scores uh, will differ from the mean by about 1.437 units. All right, well, now what we're going to do is I'm going to go to the calculator and show you how to do that. Uh, so uh, what we'll do is uh, get to the calculator. And what I've conveniently done here is I've already uh, put the data into the calculator. Uh, so you can double check that and see that uh, down the list here. Uh, oops, goes a little too far. Uh, but uh, you can see uh, that if I continue down through, they've got the values all the way up to 10. You notice I've also labeled my columns. This is the x. Those my, that's my discrete random variable. And I use the letter p for the associated probability of each. So to get those values of the mean, the standard deviation, pretty straightforward. We're going to go menu, go to statistics, go to stat calculations. And this is only one variable. We only got one uh, discrete random variable. It's that x value. The probabilities are the frequency of which that occurs. So just remember that we don't have two variables, we just have one variable. And so we only have one list that we're dealing with. And that x list is our x's that we described. And now the frequency, that's the probabilities. That's our p-value uh, that we're going to use here. And I think your calculator probably actually uh, has a c here rather than a d. Um, so I'm just going to change that so it's like what yours is. Um, press OK. And pretty cool stuff. There's your mean right there, 8.128. And if you scroll down just a little bit, you can see our standard deviation, our population standard deviation is at 1.437. So again, those two values, uh, real quickly calculate on the calculator. Uh, again, there's no restrictions to our calculator in the, in the course. So... Uh, You'll just be able to pull, pull those values out of the calculator. So good luck with the first assignment. Uh, I believe it's 1 through 13, the odds. And we'll see you on the next video or in class. Have fun. You guys are going to do great.